Uh, good morning. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody to this Open SUNY National Distance Learning Week webinar. Um, we'd like you to take a moment to let us know where you're tuning in from. You can just do that right in the chat. Um, my name is Jamie Votra. I'm the media intern for Open SUNY Online Teaching. I'm also a lecturer, er, lecturer and doctoral candidate in the communication department at the University at Albany. On behalf of the Open SUNY team, I'd like to thank you um, and welcome you to this showcase webinar as part of National Distance Learning Week. Before we introduce our speaker today, I just wanna encourage you to leave your name and email address as a part of our effort to recognize your engagement today in this community of practice opportunity. And if you look in the chat, um, Aaron will provide you a link, there it is, um, where you can do that. So Jang, if you wanna um, move on to the next slide for me. Okay, so um, today we're pleased to host Jang Tan, coming here from SUNY Oneonta. Uh, she'll be sharing her experience built about building a student-centered online research course. Dr. Jang Tan is an assistant professor at SUNY Oneonta in the Department of Secondary Education and Educational Technology. She joined the faculty there in 2015 and teaches graduate online courses for the college's Instructional Technolo Technology Specialist Program. Uh, Dr. Tang is actively involved in integrating new technology tools in both the classroom and online teaching environments. Her research interests are online education, teacher education, instructional design. Dr. Tang is also an Open SUNY online teaching ambassador, uh, and you can read more about her profile on our website. And you can find a link, yeah, absolutely. You can find a link to that um, in the chat as well, Erin, we'll, we'll share that with you. So on behalf of this Open SUNY team, thank you, uh, Dr. Tan, for joining us today and sharing what you know. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I just, you seem like you know a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it's already a new time. Uh, one thing, so I have 20 minutes for presentation and 10 minutes for questions or 25 minutes uh, who will clarify this for me. Sure, you can have either. Okay. <laughs> I try to not to make 30 minutes. Anyways, uh, okay, you already talked about me and then you know me already. My name is Jiang Tan. I thank you for you pronounce, well, your pronunciation is perfect <laughs> about my name. And uh, the title, I just repeat the title of my uh, research uh, presentation is building a student centered online research course. Uh, okay, Do you, I'm going to turn off the video so I won't inter, uh, uh, distract you during my presentation. I'll come back at the end, okay? So in this presentation, uh, I will share some of my strategies that I used to create a student-centered online research course in order to help my students. They are also uh, K-12 teachers, most of them, most of them are full-time teachers, uh, how to learn research skills and then how I help them uh, uh, how I provide virtual supervision and individualized support for the research projects. At the end, I will share my recommendations and suggestions. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm working at secondary ed and education technology department. I'm the second part education technology. Uh, I teach education technology courses. It's a uh, graduate online, pure graduate online program. Most of my students are K-12 teachers. And then during the whole program, before they finish the graduate courses, they have to complete two research courses. One is to design the research and uh, uh, get their RB approved because they work with minors. And the second course is data collection and analysis and report finding. To, full, uh, to summarize my strategies of uh, uh, make my graduate online course student-centered are empower and engage my students and 
let them involve their own student in the classroom in order to enrich their research experience and their teaching experience. So the first course is the uh, research design. They have to choose an action research, the topic, and the topic should be relevant to their uh, own teaching in their own classroom and help their own students learning. They will design the methodology and the instruments. For the instruments, I strongly recommend for the validity effect, I asked them to find well-established instrument online or get permission to revise it to fit their own needs. At the end of the first course, they will complete the first three chapters of the research paper. Uh, to them is their graduate thesis. The second course is data collection, analysis, and then finding. Uh, uh, I gave them four to six weeks of data collection, during which time they would do surveys, interviews, and observation, also the assessment for student performance. Uh, also in the second course, they will do weekly analysis, analytic memos to report, uh, kind of um, you know, summarize, formally summarize their um, weekly findings and uh, discussions also because it's a thesis project and research they set up their first uh, their research um, uh, uh, no their graduate thesis committee they have they have to find three members to serve on their committee and then com they have to discuss their finding uh, their, uh, the discussion uh, their research with the members frequently also they talk in the discussion uh, in addition to talking uh, with me also with the other members that data analysis and then the, uh, how to report their findings and then how to defend mm -hmm. Most of the time, they schedule one or two meetings with other members. So how to empower the students? Uh, first, time management. As I said, they, uh, my students are mostly full-time teachers. So it's really hard for them to juggle between the uh, graduate study and then the, their full-time job. So at the beginning, I mapped the whole research process and I gave them deadlines, even the second course. At the beginning of the first course, I told them what I expect in the second course. Usually we teach, uh, the same professor teach the two courses for the two semesters. So we know the students well. And then I asked them to create their own timeline so they won't miss anything. And then I asked them to just my, it's my own experience when I was graduate student to put the timeline timeline and everywhere. So to remind them uh, not to miss anything. Importantly, schedule in the meetings, individual meetings with the professor, that's me. Uh, I spend a lot of individual time with students because each of them have a, has a, individual research. So the first meeting is a topic. Uh, I discuss, that might be the longest time I talk with them. Students just feel like they want to do everything and they're all over the map. So I need to focus. And then the instruments, we finalize instruments for the RB application. The RB, RB application seem like just a form and the instruments, but with the SUNY Research Foundation website and then all the new regulations, now it's even more complicated. Uh, so I usually help them, you know, you use Zoom to share and then just work with them online to revise their instruments and application. So, and then, then during the data collection analysis and then report even the defense some even rehearsed defense with me. Uh, you know, it, it's like, a, it's a class, but I kind of like have a individual meetings more, a lot more than the uh, 
classroom, uh, the whole class FaceTime. And then students like that. Another thing to empower them is help them to manage their research. Uh, we conduct the action research because they can take the action in their own classroom and then find uh, and work with their own students and then experiment the technology the teacher are familiar with and then they know their student they 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 uh, feel the student will on um, not only like it and then will also help the help them with their learning improve their uh, performance they have to identify a special a specific problem that during their in their teaching and student learning and uh, so that way they manage their own uh, research to, uh, for, uh, around the uh, research, a specific problem. The research question, I always ask them, when you develop the research question, it's not only your own interest, also the interests interest of your peers, because at the end, you will share your findings and the answers with their peers, with your own peers. Uh, to engage them, uh, so the, quest, the research questions, uh, usually I don't want them to just pick any question they want. I want them to just focus on two uh, learning domains. So the question will be, uh, will f uh, focus on how uh, the integration of a technology affects students' motivation and then their learning uh, performance, the affective and then the uh, uh, cognitive learning domain. Uh, when they do the research, they explore the answers with their own students because they conduct this, the research with, in their own classroom. They embed the data collection process in their uh, lesson instruction in order to improve students' motivation and performance. Also, uh, the whole research process or the whole two courses, my focus and then I want students to do are to reflect all the time because uh, they can help not only themselves, also the peers, and to evaluate their activities during the research process and uh, to reevaluate in order to re reinforce their research skill, also their teaching. So all these three uh, will happen during the weekly discussion and then their analytic memos for evaluation, reevaluation, also for reflection too. And Every two weeks, they will report their observation and then they will uh, help each other to adjust and then me uh, get into the discussion too, to adjust their observation uh, field notes, whether they work or don't work or they can learn not only help each other, help others, they can learn from others uh, feel experience, uh, feel observation experience too. So the focus is encourage them uh, to do the self-guided ex uh, guided ex exploration. Since they are doing their research in their own classroom and with their own students, I strongly encourage them to, in, uh, to involve their own students. So the, the technology they use to, uh, is not only they like, they want, they have to make sure the student like it and then make sure uh, the students uh, will be more engaged while using the technology. So uh, when they, now I want to go back a little bit to my first course of uh, doing the research. At the very beginning, I asked the student to predict the next semester when their data collection start, uh, what unit or what, uh, according to their curriculum, uh, what they will teach during the six weeks. So they plan ahead of time what technology they want to use and then uh, 
what uh, content area they will student will learn and they will teach and how the technology will help all these learning and teaching so uh, they already plan their uh, research design how they feel the technology will motivate student learning during the six weeks and then at the end of course they will find out whether it's what they planned or what they assumed and so the all the class activity classroom activities are designed in the first course uh, how they will integrate the technology during the uh, classroom activities so in this way they build not only their own research skills and teaching experience and also students uh, personal and then practical skills because a lot of activities are uh, collaborative and then uh, uh, collective collaborative uh, activities and problem based learning project based learning while using the technology so in this way they reinforce students learning with the technology integration and an application we choose the uh, action research just because we want to take advantage of the cyclic nature of the research uh, uh, format so at the end of the program um, we uh, asked uh, uh, at the uh, at the end of the research, I asked them not to stop there because what they've been doing during the six weeks during the two courses, they are uh, doing the study or uh, using the technology in their own classroom with their own teaching instruction. So they can revise their research plan at the end of their graduate study and then repeat the same study or they can consider a different uh, action to do the study and they can uh, create and incorporate new activities in the new study in order to reflect the, new, the finding the re redo the study again and again so it's a lifelong skill that's why we choose the uh, uh, action research in order to re re uh, improve their teaching all the time So at the end, um, during the whole time, I, uh, I feel my role completely changed as an instructor. I'm no, no, no longer take fully control, standing in front of the student, tell student what to do all the time. I'm a coach, I'm a facilitator. I help them to find just find resources and then adjust their research uh, study data collection methods and then I'm also a counselor especially for my students they have a frustrated whole day of teaching and the, in the evening they will do their uh, graduate courses graduate assignments so uh, I really help them not only with academic growth but psychologically counseling with them too and for the student they are no longer or they are they play two roles a teacher and then researcher so they have to really take control of their research during the whole research process the collaboration and interaction are really keys I always collect students feedback share and then adjust share the feedback with the student adjust my teaching and adjust their learning and then we help each other uh, and then the student reflect on their own and then their peers research activities they help each other and then improve their own uh, skills so all the student teacher and the student stu with student interactions help them help make the research really relevant to k-12 teaching experience thank you and uh, any questions i really rush i don't know <laughs> okay perfect i think
Okay, <laughs> where are we? Can you hear me now? Any questions now? Yeah, I can hear you, Jang. This is uh, this is Aaron. Would you be willing to um, share those slides again so Jamie can do the okay? Oh, <laughs> I closed. It. And I'll just share a comment um, real quick to open this up. Um, I thought using the term empowering your students is is really great and a, a good way to get us to think a little differently about how we engage them um, to give them that ownership of that process. And you spend a, a lot of time with your students and you really get to know them very well. Um, and the other thing that I found really um, that was, you know, inspiring is how they are applying that research in their current, their relevant environment because they're constantly learning and relearning by doing that and they can adjust and make accommodations along the way um, and try new things, like you said, you know, to see what works. Yeah, I, you know, that's why one of the reasons we choose action research, I cannot find the sharing. Okay, share here. Okay, now I'm back to the slides. Okay, can you see my screen now? We can see your screen. Um, do you want to advance it to the, the next slide? Okay. I, you know, I was thinking of my own presentation. I forgot this, you designed the slides. Yeah, so we are on this one, question and answers. Yeah, and um, if there's no questions or no questions maybe at this moment, and you can also move it towards the next slide. Um, okay. Uh, so while people are maybe thinking about some additional questions, um, I do want to uh, thank you very much, Jing, for sharing with us today. Um, once again, I do invite people to let us know where they tuned in from today. You can do that right in the chat. Um, this session today will, was recorded and we will be uploading that to our YouTube channel for your reference. You can also access all of our webinar recordings and resources at the URL right there on the slide. Um, additional activities are happening this week around the globe for National Distance Learning Week. So we hope you take a look at the U.S. Distance Learning Association's lineup as well as the Online Learning Consortium um, hosting a week of webinars focused on accessibility. You'll see those uh, links right there on the left-hand side of the slide, as well as in the chat, Erin is providing those to you as well. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today. We hope to see you at another distance learning event in the future. And uh, we'll stick around for a few minutes in case anybody has any questions or anything to follow up with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I tried to, so you can see me. I cannot see anybody. Any, uh, I saw something in the chat area, anything, let me see it, anything I should pay attention or? I don't see any questions at the moment. So it's not a question, okay, now I have, okay, I put a, I make a screenshot, so, or I just copy all that. I see a lot of comments about, um, appreciating the information that you shared. So that's, those are all very positive. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking at them, them too. I, I saw it during the presentation. I say, I know if there's question, you will let me know. So I say, oh, okay, I don't have to take care of it now. <laughs> Absolutely. And if anyone is left on the call who wants to ask a question, you can feel free to unmute your mic or even share your video if you'd like us to see you. <laughs> yeah.